Welcome to Swiftly Explained. Today we're going to see all the hidden details and Easter eggs in Taylor Swift's music video Fortnite. Taylor herself said that the music video isn't about one specific topic or person, but a mashup of all the songs on the album, so let's decode the scenes based on this perspective. Let's go through the first scene. She is handcuffed to the bed and she is given forget him pills before she is allowed to walk around. The container has her full date of birth and the date of the album release. Then there's a two-way mirror from which they observe the patient. She sees that she has gotten permanently tattooed by her past relationship, and as everyone knows she is wearing the same choker and dress from the Grammys which is also similar to what Clara Bow wore as well. The pins on her head showcase a 13 in Roman numbers. She is also wearing the garter as an Easter egg from the Eras tour. I wanted to let everyone know that these are my thoughts and analysis of the video so feel free to leave your comments if you want. I think Taylor Swift actually admitted herself in the mental hospital after her breakup with Joe Alwyn. This is the only recurring theme that keeps coming back in her lyrics and in the video as well. In her self-written song, Who's Afraid of Little Old Me, she specifically tells us that you wouldn't last an hour in the asylum they raised me referring to her time in the mental institution after the breakup. Now I know people will say that she's referring to Clara Bow and how she got admitted in the asylum after her lover left her. But we also know Taylor doesn't just depict someone's story if the same thing haven't happened to her own self. Just like she told the story of Rebecca Harkins in The Great American Dynasty. She is telling her story, but she is also showing how the same thing happened to her after she bought the holiday house in Rhode Island. I also did some research and found out about the shock therapy she showcases in one of the scenes. Shock therapy is used for someone who is in deep depression and starts having suicidal thoughts and there's no other way left to bring them back to normality. And the shock therapy lasts from 12 to 15 days depending on patient's condition. Then I realized why the song is called Fortnite. While treatment the patient is carefully examined each day until the process is over, and they also give some pills to control the symptoms, just like in the first scene. The symptoms are mostly hallucinations and forgetfulness, like when she wakes up we see the bed in a weird angle and the bathtub on the ceiling with the chair. It feels like all part of her hallucination with the person walking on the ceiling. She spent 14 days in the mental asylum which she calls a long hospital drag in the song The Alchemy and Travis was the one to pull her out of it. Then she is moved to the other room with the lover who ruined her life. They are writing songs together showcasing that she wrote multiple songs with Joe and they were all sad breakup songs. Well, Joe and I really love sad songs. We've always bonded over music, so we have What's sad songs. On? We just really love sad songs, what can I say? Um, the lights from their typewriters come out and it showcases his blue aura that she has mentioned a bazillion times in her songs and hers is an orangish color showing her fire. She is also wearing a Victorian morning dress, just like the one her dancers wore in the performance of My Tears Ricochet in Eras Tour. Now I think these scenes are in juxtaposition, because the next scene is about a happy relationship. Many people think that she is reminiscing about the happy times Taylor and her lover had but I think these scenes refer to Travis Kelsmore. The tattoo less Post Malone is Travis and the tattooed one is Joe, that's why it ruined her life and gave his tattoos to her as we see in the beginning. And the romantic motions they are doing are very similar to Taylor and Travis' gestures. Like when she ran to him at the Eras tour. Many people also assumed that Malone is saying all right now when they are both laughing. Then the scene cuts to the experiment room where Taylor is getting the shock therapy. Her heartbeat is speaking the lyrics, I love you, it's ruining my life, over and over again. Also the doctors are the actual cast of the Toured Poet Society. There's also a black dog referring to Song and the lyrics about her ex-lover who went to a place called Black Dog and forgot to turn off his location after telling her he was going somewhere else. The tattooed Post Malone is there referring to Joe again. In one of the lyrics she says that he used her only to do experiments on. After the circuit breaks, he reads her heartbeat and sees the lyrics, then quickly pulls out the chords, saving her life. Then the last scene showcases Post calling Taylor from the booth. This I think also refers to Travis because he was the one who wanted to give her his number and call her. He is the one who saved her from going insane. Chaos erupts in every scene and she throws out papers, crying and breaking the mirror having a mental breakdown. But then the scene cuts to Taylor finally grabbing his hand letting someone help her, and we see a glimpse of a friendship bracelet on her wrist showcasing the beginning of Taylor and Travis's love story. Now let's talk about the lyrics for a second. This album starts from the line, I was supposed to be sent away, but they forgot to come and get me. And, Midnight's album ended with the line, Is that your key in the door? Is it you? Or have they come to take me away? In hits different. She even liked the post on Instagram in which a fan explained this exact same theory about the lyrics intertwining. So this confirms the rumors. And this album is the continuation from there. Her lover didn't come back and she ended up in the psych ward. She also admits that she was an alcoholic which was speculated by a lot of people when she recurrently started posting pics with drinks in her hand in almost every occasion. She also talks about addiction in the song. This is me trying on folklore where she talks about actively fighting something every day. This person who 
is really lost in life and then starts drinking and every second is trying not to. Yeah. About addiction and I've been thinking about people who are suffering through mental illness or they're suffering through addiction or they're, no one pats them on the back every day, but every day they are actively fighting something. She says, I poured my heart out to a stranger, but I didn't pour the whiskey referring that she was trying to get rid of her addiction. This song is a combination of all things mentioned on her album, just like the video. She talks about Maddie, Joe, Travis, Florida, Clara Bow, and all the other aspects mentioned on Tortured Poets. The interconnection of the two married couples where she says, I want to end your wife and end my husband, might be referring to Clara Bow and how she got betrayed by her lover. On the second verse, she says, All my mornings are Mondays stuck on an endless February. Taylor and Joe were rumored to be broken up in February before they announced it later. She says, I took the miracle move on drug. The effects were temporary. Now the miracle move on drug could be two things. The shock therapy she underwent or her rebound with Maddie Healy to take her mind off of Joe. Both seemed like they didn't work. Then she keeps repeating the line, I love you, it's ruining my life in the bridge of the song. And in the outro, she talks about moving to Florida, referencing her song Florida on the album. She talked about the song saying, Florida is a song that I wrote with Florence and the Machine. And I think I was coming up with this idea of like, what happens when your life doesn't fit or your choices you've made catch up to you? And there's just, you're surrounded by these harsh consequences and judgment and, and circumstances did not lead you to where you thought you would be. And you just want to escape from everything you've ever known. Is there a place you could go? <laughs> I'm always watching like Dateline. People, you know, have these crimes that they commit. Where do they immediately skip town and go to? Like, they go to Florida. They, like, try to reinvent themselves, have a new identity, blend in. And I think when you go through a heartbreak, there's a part of you that thinks, I want a new name. I want a new life. I don't want anyone to know where I've been or know me at all. And so that was kind of what, that was the jumping off point behind where would you go to reinvent yourself and blend in? Florida. I think Taylor's personally in a better place now than she has ever been. One toxic relationship can ruin your whole life, and one good one can save everything. I hope she never has to go through this heartbreak ever again and stay happy like she deserves to be. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and stay tuned for the upcoming video in which I'll explain the full Tortured Poets Department album song by song.